Hello, my name is Shadley here. Welcome back for another episode of uh, Victoria 3 as Ethiopia. In a previous episode, uh, we started producing, well, we built up the arms industries. It's not actually producing much yet because, well, uh, we don't have a lot of iron mining going on quite yet, but that will start going. But I've uh, done a bit of testing on where we can start expanding next. Um, one thing that I do want to conquer is um, Madagascar, especially for the 80 coal mines that could be had there. That would be feeding our industry for quite a while. Unfortunately, that would involve having a fleet and land the troops there, and they got a pretty decently sized uh, army, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's up to 31 battalions, so that is quite significant. But a lot easier power for us to take is uh, over here, Mahara. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and start with that already. Declare interest. We'll take away that one for now. And we'll put in Arabia as the interest that we'll be working towards. And also, another thing that I need to do, or I probably should do, is um, I'm going to get rid of the promote our values. Because I'm pretty sure that, the, at least in the release version, there is a little bit of bug with the assimilation that it doesn't really happen all that much. So I'm going to take that one away, and what I can start doing instead is I'm going to start boosting the or bolstering the popularity of the Royal Folk. And the reason for that is simple. Um, once I get the Romanticism, which we are researching right now, and that's going to be done in about 16 months, we can start working on uh, first removing the traditionalism and the agrarianism. That's not really particularly good, but it at least gets rid of the traditionalism, which, you know, is going to be an improvement. And then after that, we can start focusing also on the per capita taxation of that one. Yeah, that just requires the traditionalism not to be in place. So that's going to increase our tax income. And also we can eventually, well, I mean, technically speaking, we could already try to get rid of the serfdom, but it's very difficult to pass right now. However, if we increase the popularity of the rural folk and then we bring in like the industrialists, for example, into the government, we can get that one done. Although before we do that, we'll probably want to get some religious schools. I mean, the private schools would be nice as well. But I think since the church kind of opposes those, then it's going to be difficult. And the church is, I think, currently the second most popular. Well, actually, no, the rural folk is the second most, and that's the third biggest uh, sort of interest group. Uh, but then also, a few things that we do need to do is uh, we're going to have to build a shipyard. So I'm going to put that into the build queue. And I suppose we should also increase our government, our administration. I'll put in three of those, so we'll have up to five in Ethiopia. Just to have enough uh, bureaucracy to run everything that we need. Also, we'll build a glassworks there and a food industry. And then what we'll also do is we'll queue up some construction sectors. At least one more will be fine. And we'll need to reorganize a little bit of this. So we'll put the construction sector to the top. Then we'll get the tobacco plantation because, you know, it's at least some luxury resource and there is a pretty high demand for them. Then getting a bit of logging. Uh, the textile mill is really important. Furniture manufacturers. Also, another thing that we can do is probably since, okay, that one's uh, hiring. It doesn't have a lot of people. We've got a lot of uh, plantations, especially tea plantations in here, which are not all that well... Well, <laughs> soft. So I'm going to remove at least one of them. That might increase the radicals just a little bit, but it's just, you know, reducing the sort of waste in here in terms of the capacity. So I'm going to reduce that to two, just so that the sort of population that we have in here will be slightly better used. And of course, once we get the shipyard, we can upgrade the ports to have actually increase the infrastructure in here. But first, we need clippers for that. And since we can't trade yet, that's going to be a problem. But let's go ahead and unpause, shall we? So the landowners don't have the high loyalty right now. I still got the family ties, but yeah, that one. Okay, so that does reduce our income just a little bit, but that's all right. The rural folk is very loyal, so that it does increase the infrastructure. And did we already get the Arabia interest done? I believe we did. So our first target is going to have to be Mara. Uh, are they... we got pretty good relations with them. And also another thing that we should have a look is... Let's have a look at the diplomatic action. So who is present in here? Or has interest in Ru uh, Russia, France, especially from the bigger nations. And then Egypt, Britain, and the Ottomans. So what we're going to start doing is... Let's have a look at um, Ottoman Empire. They're cautious about me, so I'm going to improve relations with you. And then let's actually... Improve relations with Russia. Russia is currently cooperative. If we have our relations 
Let's actually have a look at the... Well, we've got good relations with Egypt, for sure. Ottoman Empire is cautious. France is cooperative, for now. But once we get in here, they might change their tune a little bit. But yeah, I think what we can do is we can... Soon start a war. Actually, I should probably increase our relations with Russia, just in case. The relations aren't all that great, but if we can make sure that everyone is somewhat happy with us, we don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, another thing that we can probably do soon, uh, also, uh, once we get these done, let's pull in one of the administration in here before the textile mill. Although the textile mill is going to be really good for profit, but at the same time, if we can increase our administration or bureaucracy points, then that is going to increase the taxation. Because we currently have uh, almost 8% tax waste. Uh, right, so we've got... Oh, we do actually have 10 points going. Oh, because we just got the construction exit right. And that's going to be a little bit extra uh, expenditure. But it also means that we are going to be building a little bit faster. We've got a decent stockpile of cash right now. Uh, gold reserves right now. So that will be pretty useful. I think uh, in 1852 we'll probably declare the war on Mara. Hopefully that goes well. Oh, a small conspiracy. Mortality of slaves in Gondor goes up and slaves become more radical. Or we can lower the interest uh, or the landowner's approval rating, increase the trade unionist's uh, approval rating. I think we don't want to get more radicals. We already have uh, more than 1 million out of the less than 8 million population, or just shy of 8 million in po total population. So, yeah, improving the situation over there would be useful. Now, is there any laws that I could pass? I mean, other than serfdom, but I don't think that would pass, quite frankly. Yet. Although, mm, how much is that negative for the... It would go to negative 4 for the landowners. Just before we start doing that, is there something over here that... They, no, they are happy from the peasant levies. Oh, ah, right, for the national militia. Hmm. I am tempted to abolish the serfdom regardless. If I put in the rural folk and maybe bring in the industrialists or someone else in here. Although, does that mean... No, it just reduces the landowner's political strength, so that would actually be smart. You know, we'll give it a try. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Although, before we do that, we should also become the government. Oh, but, the, well, intelligentsia we could bring in. That would be an extra 8% chance of succeeding, although the legitimacy goes down, so it's going to take longer to pass those things. But yeah, if we can get... It's 20% chance of now, so that would be quite useful. So the war against Mara is uh, we can occupy the islands over here because we've got connection there. And that means that we'll control part of the state that we are going to be wanting to take from them. Well, it's basically Yemen is all of this. So, you know, we'll take in some of it and then we'll get the basically ticking war score for owning part of it. That's probably something that will, mm, I presume, will get changed later on. But right now, at least, it's a one way for you to expand. So the reason why we want to get into Yemen is because there's lead mines there, and then there's a chance that we can get to Hejaz, which has sulfur. So both lead and sulfur are really important for us. Now, of course, in addition to all of that, we will need some coal later on. But like, the sulfur is going to allow us to get some explosives going so we can get our ammunition going. The lead is going to be really useful for the ammunition as well, plus some class making and other things. So there is a lot of good things in there. But I think what we're going to do is we are going to declare the war now. Congo State Mara. There might be some other nations joining in. I'm hoping that there's not too many of them, though. Um, I don't think I can invite anyone. Question is, if they can invite someone, who are gonna, who will they invite? Um, right. So you got some commanders, right? I think you are gonna be the one that is gonna be doing the attack in there. It's just gonna be a very quick attacker, quite frankly. The rest of the troops don't need to be activated. You know, and they don't have an army, but we don't have a fleet to land troops in the mainland there. But we don't have to, is the point. Now, next question is, is there going to be anyone joining this? Uh, no one's leaning towards them yet. So that's at least a good sign. Uh, but they might still give us some... Actually, what is their war goal? It's just the war reparations. So even if we lose, it's just going to be costing us a little bit. But I don't think we necessarily will. The only thing that could uh, sort of... Um, be a problem or a serious problem is France joins the enemy side but I doubt they will because France likes us don't they yeah it's a genial attitude desirable ally right so that's actually something that we might want to think about 
And most of the other nations are declaring neutrality now, so yeah, it's gonna be a very cheap uh, or easy war here. We'll just conquer this island and then we'll just wait. It will take some time. But two arms, and there we go, we all reoccupied it. Now we can't land there because we don't have fleets. Um, which is something that once we get the shipyard, we can probably start building some naval bases. We'll probably need two shipyards to be able to provide all the clippers that we need and then some of the Man of Wars. But then once we have a decent enough fleet, we might be... Oh, atmospheric engine unlocked. Excellent. Uh, that's for mostly for the mines. We need coal to run those. Which is a bit... Actually... Oh yeah, it, it does require coal and tools. Speaking of tools... Um, we could increase the tool production because, well, actually, right now it'll be fine. And we got another tool workshop underway. One thing, though, that we could probably do is let's have a look at the buildings. The millet farms, we can start using harvesting tools there. That does increase the tool consumption a lot. But at the same time, that's going to reduce the amount of slaves that we are using drastically. So, uh, Which, in turn, should start lowering the radicalism, maybe. Although it also means that they won't be getting paid, so, you know... It probably has a bit of a negative as well in there. Now, how is the serfdom abolished? It's still 20%. I think we are only going to get our first roll here soon. Okay, so now we definitely need to increase the tool production. We don't have a lot of iron production yet, so that's going to skyrocket the price of iron through the roof. But that'll be fine. Actually, are we building? Yeah, we're building an iron mine over here as well. That's good. We're losing a little bit of cash, but I'm not too worried about that yet. And one thing that's going to happen once we actually take this is there's going to be immediately a famine because it is a basically a desert area, I believe. And they're struggling with income in there. So once we take that, there's going to be a famine and it might spread into Somaliland again. Uh, I've done a few test runs uh, on where this is going to go. Um, but yeah, if I can keep everyone or all the great powers happy over here in Arabia or who are, have interest in Arabia, then I can take over all of this more or less. But if there's anyone that joins against me, well, not necessarily anyone, but mostly, I suppose, if France joins against me, then I'm in trouble because uh, I need to protect this. And one thing that I'm not going to be doing is uh, being lining to colonization because even if I do, I can maybe get one province over here. And by that point, France has taken all, everything else in here, so we can't go into the colonization route all that much anyway. Technically speaking, if we had started going for that from the get-go, we might have a chance. I think the medical degrees might actually be the next one, or the international relations. Um, stock exchange isn't too bad either, we can't do really all that many trade routes yet anyway. So medical degrees, just so that we can get the charity hospital, so that's going to decrease the mortality rate. And we'll start getting a bit more population. Oh, and apparently we had, um, yeah. I don't think the serfdom abolishment is going to go through quite yet, so what we're going to do is, in the meanwhile, uh, we'll need to switch some of the laws, I presume. But since we got the... Oh, well, I suppose it's that one. Oh, we need to get rid of certain to get the religious schools. Now, of course, there might be some schools over here, or school things over here, but we need further research to be done to get those in. Okay. Agrarianism is something that we can do now. Oh, right, romanticism was the thing that we just got, isn't it? That will radicalize the landowners, so what we'll probably need to do is just wait for their opinion. Oh, there we go, they are happy now. So now if we try to get the agrarianism, it's gonna make them be a zero loyalty. Or approval rating, rather. But that is gonna be fine, it's only gonna be 13% chance of succeeding right now. Uh, what we can do, of course, is um, kick the intelligentsia out. Uh, that does increase the legitimacy, at least. Also reduces the loyalist and increases radicals a little bit, but that's not too big of an issue. But at least we'll have um, a quick sort of progress on this, all of these ticks. And you know, if we can get the agrarianism, then we can increase our taxation. Speaking of taxation, we could probably go for the medium taxes again. And is there anything over here that we want to get rid of? Oh, there's the coffee tax that we could put in. The tea tax is a little bit higher though, so we'll probably leave it as is. We got these fundings pretty good as well for the time being. Oh, right, we got the extra bureaucracy. Then that means we're actually making some decent uh, taxation money again. But if need be, we can... Actually, didn't we just increase the taxes? Yes, we did. Okay, so that might sort of... Well, it's probably not going to increase the radicals directly, but it just reduces the amount of loyalists that we'll be getting. 
put our war over here soon over. And then we'll probably need to do a bit of um, reduction over here. Maybe we'll get rid of the coffee plantation because, well, it does have 2,000 workers there. The wheat farm only has a lot less, in fact. Okay. What we are going to do in here, the trade centers are probably going to disappear because we don't do trading. We're going to put in the harvesting tools there and we can put in the solar enriching farming. So that increases the fertilizer use a little bit, but also gives a lot more grain. And then they produce wine over there, but that's actually fine. And the fruit and liquor prices are going up as well as the transportation, but the transportation is not something that I need to worry about that much. But how is the standard of living in there? 7.7. .7. Mm, okay. So it's rubbish, but it is increasing now. It might not be increasing all that much, admittedly. Oh, Napoleonic warfare unlocked. Excellent. If we have a look at the military text right now, so we've got on pretty far in here. I think the field works would be really useful, and then of course some of the navy stuff over here will be useful if we are going to be, well, I mean, we will be building a fleet. Because either way, if we want to invade Italy, then we are, I don't need to go land route, which means a lot of wars against very big nations. Or we need to do a landing in there, which might be the easiest, easier path. And then of course we want to take Madagascar. Not only because it has coal, but if there is going to be a pandemic in the future, then that's of course going to be the safest location to be, according to Pandemic Incorporation. Or Play Inc. Sorry, not Pandemic. Um, okay. National success chance 10%, bureaucracy minus 5%, and more radicalism. A little bit more radicalism, or success chance minus 10 No, we're going to take the boost of it over here as much as possible just so that we can get the law passed and that's going to start reducing the power of the landowners more and more now what we're going to do is we are going to still keep the absolute monarchy so to speak but at the same time we can hopefully start uh, reducing the power so we can pass some laws i don't think we like we're going to stay as a monarchy and autocracy i think just for the heck of it like i know that the democracy is sort of better in a lot of ways but you know, that's kind of what everyone goes to, so I feel like over here the king doesn't want to, or the emperor doesn't want to relinquish power. But at the same time, we kind of want to make sure that we can make the life a little bit better for the people, in such a way that there's going to be a, perhaps a few less rebellions. Like the radicals are pretty high in here still, and the standard of living is still struggling, but they are at least at the minimum expected in there. Don't matter that turmoil though. It is going a little bit up and down. Diplomatic tour. Um, yeah, we'll get the influence. I don't want to increase the... Although the approval rating would be nice. But the industry's political strength is something that I want to avoid with the land owners right now. Just so that we can pass some of the laws that we desperately need. Especially to be able to start trading with other nations. That is going to be very crucial. Right, so how are the French uh, looking at us right now? They are still genial. Um, what about Russia? That's genial. Ottoman Empire is a little cautious. They are currently at war. Uh, we're improving our relations with them, so at least it's cordial relations. Um, but if they're war... Mm -hmm. I wonder if I was to declare war on Kathiri. Also, I suppose there is still Britain that we might have to improve relations with. Although they are protective of us, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. So I'm just thinking, should we declare war on Cathedra already? I don't know who would join there. I suspect that there might be some of these uh, nations, especially... Oh, that's just disinterested. All right. Hedgehogs is cooperative. That one's disinterested. That one's cautious. So if we do a war, there is a risk that other people would join in here. Although I'm kind of hoping that there is... I mean, there is a bit of combat in here. Between Egypt and the Ottomans. Yeah, and the Ottomans are losing that. Well, they are attacking as well, so that kind of makes sense. But that might keep their troops busy. So now might be the best chance, quite frankly. Kathiri? Uh, actually, before we do that, I'm just going to double check my... Yeah, we don't have that much infamy. So, conquer state. Um, confirm. We are going to activate one of the generals. I mean, I know that if I make my leader a general... Or the king uh, general, he's got pretty good stats overall. Let's just double check. Offensive planner, yeah, there's 30% uh, offense chance, so that is actually pretty good. You know what, I'm gonna make him a general. I know that this was pointed in the comments as well. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm going to make him a general now. He's got commanding 44 battalions, though, so that is pretty massive. Um, not really sure if I'm going to send him over. What we're going to do is we are going to take... Um, you're the pillager. You know what? We could probably do it. It's going to be costing us a lot. If we send it over there, it's, well, probably not going to be too bad. But yeah, that is a pretty massive amount of troops. The rest of the troops will probably just stay over here defending if there's someone joining. Because they could be... Oh, back to dealings exposed. Okay, so either minus 15% chance and... Who is, uh... Guillermo Salazar? That's one of the generals. Just a group of landowners, alright. Or... Throw them into the walls, we must clean up this mess. That'd be minus 10% chance of succeeding, or an actual success chance, and minus 5% bureaucracy. I'm gonna reduce the popularity of the general, but it also means that the... Well... Thing is probably not gonna pass. Unless we get lucky. But, like, I usually don't. Oh, someone joined. There's the Cosmet State. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wait at least a little bit longer. So they'll be bringing some troops. We'll have 40 battalions. We'll be able to mop the floor with them. Just keeping an eye on if there's more of them. So, Nade. Declared neutrality at least. How many others have declared neutrality? I mean, there's still Russia and Great Britain and France and Ottomans and Egypt on the fence here. And then there's a few other of the smaller nations. We'll see, though. I wouldn't mind taking um, Kasmit State as well, because that is where they got the industry in this uh, entire state right now. They got a bit of textile mills there, so it's not a massive amount of industry, mind you. But it's also where most of the population is. They got almost uh, a million pops in there. Whereas most of the other areas don't have quite that much. What I might do though is, oh, we got a government administration already in here underway. We're just going to get the iron mines before the tooling workshop because we increased the iron usage already. And we're going to put in the government administration already in there as well. I do actually wonder, what is the tool situation? Are we producing a lot extra? Um, we're actually not producing quite enough. We did switch the production method though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. But it's just the lack of iron right now then. Okay, um, I can't add in more goals anymore. Well, I waited too long, but that's all right. Not going to worry about it. We can do another war later. But this is going to increase the uh, sort of uh, influence that we have in here anyway. Two arms. What was the lost condition in here? War reparations, all right. Oh, it's two versus six, but we got line infantry, so we are actually winning this. And then there's another combat, and that's easy victory. And that's going to be another victory. Oh, now let's split the front. Well, uh, that should be all right, at least in theory. Although, I suppose what I could do, I got some armies in here that have not been mobilized. I'm just going to send you down that way already, just to make sure that we got someone facing the enemy. Now, we don't have all our troops as light infantry yet, but we've got a decent chunk of them. Actually, these are both irregulars. Huh. Alright. We've got a battle already over here. Now we've got two of the armies advancing. So, yeah, we are going to be winning this war fairly soon, I reckon. Unequal treaties. I can improve our relations with Great Britain, and we'd own an uh, obligation to Great Britain, though, which might be a bit of a problem. But if we don't start trading or open up our markets or anything like that until, like, that favor expires, they won't be able to pull us into their market. I mean, being in their market is probably not the worst thing, quite frankly, but still, if I can avoid it, I will. There we go. We conquer more of Yemen. But there's two fishing wars. Is there? There is quite a bit extra in here. I'm just going to remove one of these. It might increase the radicalism a little bit. Also, the coffee plantations, there's just massive shortage of people working. Although, actually, there's a decent bit of slaves there. But yeah, we're going to reduce the size of the coffee plantation here to like at least, or at most two. And then the wheat farms are already... Yeah, we could probably reduce by one. It's not necessarily going to be good for the radicalism, but at the same time means that there's going to be slightly less of... Um, well, actually, yeah, that did get quite a bit of unemployment in here for the time being. I'm also going to build a lead mine sooner rather than later. 
So how's the market prices? The small arms price goes down, the fabric price is slightly going up, but it's still very small. Because we do get a lot of uh, fabrics. And there we go, medical decree. Uh, we'll probably continue doing the society things. I think at this stage the international relations would be pretty smart. Uh, just so that we can maybe get some alliances or something going. Although it's very unlikely that we'll be able to get good alliances. But, you know, it's at least a step to the correct direction. And hopefully we can increase the relations with all the bigger nations in here. I mean, does France still like us? They're still cordial and genial attitude. So they wouldn't be interfering with my wars. And I'm guessing Ottoman Empire is cautious. Once we get the relations to be high enough, I think that's going to be fine. What about Russia? That is fine as well. And then Egypt is genial. Oh, and... This just breaks ranks. Right. Uh, whichever we do is not going to end well for the agrarianism. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... Whatever reduces the landowner's power as much as possible. What about the serfdom now? If we wait a little bit, we might be... Oh, yeah, we'll have to probably wait for a week or so. It's the national... Oh, right, the peasant levies is not something that we are interested in. And we still haven't unlocked the... Actually, no, the health system... If we were to get the... Church into the... Government now. That does reduce our legitimacy a little bit. But now we could get the charity hospitals. Now that does take a decent bit of uh, bureaucracy to run, so that's going to be a problem. And I suppose what I could do, I'm going to stop bolstering the rural folk for a little bit and then start bolstering the church just to increase the success chance of the hospitals. Oh, and there's a decent. Oh, there's actually a bit of unemployment going on in uh, Somaliland. Well, that's good news. And yeah, none of these are actually hiring. Ah, excellent. So how much do we have pops in uh, Yemen right now? We've got 84,000. It is technically growing up, or growing in there, so at least that's good. And we're getting the extra government administration soon. Oh, and that reminds me. Once we get the... We'll probably do these two after that. Uh, that one's going to be spreading to us naturally anyway. And then the max communication is something that we'll probably want to get as well for the authority. But then the central archive is something that we should probably start investing soon enough. Also, I suppose another thing that I could do is build another university in here. Because we've got the established university thing already. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull that to the top or to be the second one to be built. So we can get the university and we can get a little bit more boost for the... Not only the literary rates, but also increase the research piece that we have. Our standard of living is currently 9.9, .9, so that's not great. But I suppose it's largely being pulled back by... The, well, that's actually... Okay, 9.3 over there. 10, 10, 9.3. So this one needs to get a bit more standard of living as well. We've got a lot of livestock ranches over here. As well as a lot of other things, to be fair. Are they lacking? Oh, right, that's just not profitable to hire everything. Now, to be fair, once we get the grocery or the food industries done, which is still far, far away, but that's got to be a really good money-making thing, and it also tends to increase the standard of living quite nicely. But it would appear that we are out of time for this episode, so if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, the links down below in the description. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.